it's V from Casually Fragrant. So I got tagged in a video. It's the Freedom After COVID fragrance tag. It was, it's the 10 fragrances for 10 situations. The tag was started by Smurfy Girly and I was tagged by Rose and Jones. I'll link both their channels down below. They are some of my favorite fragrance reviewers. Absolutely love all of their suggestions and review videos and love the tag videos that they're coming out with. I know I don't always do the tag, but I always watch them. So this time I'm actually gonna be filming a tag video. So no matter how we are, like when I'm filming this, it's uh, COVID, it's we're under uh, lockdown where I am in, like a semi-lockdown, I should say. I'm staying indoors mostly because I'm high risk. So whatever your situation is, this is a great tag to talk about fragrances that if some people already are able to do these things, they can enjoy, um, you know, discussing what fragrance they want to use or it's also for people who like me are going to dream about when they can do these things and actually wear fragrance for it so the first uh situation is a quiet night in the pub with a fella so that would be with my husband <laughs> and i think for me it would be like most likely situation would be my husband would come and meet me after work uh because i work in downtown so there's more kind of pubs and bars in that area so i probably wouldn't be wearing a fragrance at work and i would want to spray something uh, probably on my way to meet him. So I want something that I've decanted, something that I have with me, something I really enjoy, and a scent that he really likes as well. And for that, I chose Keep Glazed by The House of Oud. This is a creamy mango fragrance. It's absolutely delicious smelling. It's got lemon, mango, strawberry leaf, uh, cream coconut ginger some fruity musk and woods and all these bottles from the house of oud they're hand painted in italy they're absolutely gorgeous i love this fragrance my husband likes this fragrance on me so if we're just gonna have a night where we're gonna go to a bar together i would probably pick out something like this obviously i wouldn't take the bottle with me it's too gorgeous to just drop in my bag <laughs> i would probably have this decanted and keep that in my purse and as one of my favorite fragrances i do keep decants of this one next one is let's change it up to a busy night so a busy night at the pub i should say so this is probably we're gonna go with my husband and i and meet some friends in a bar and i have worn lira by zerjoff actually I'm, it seems like i'm only i don't only have italian perfumes in this in this tag video i swear but this is probably my favorite fragrance i um I absolutely love it. I've worn it to uh, pubs in the past, to friends' birthday parties, and I've received compliments. I had a server come up to me and be like, what are you wearing? And when I said Lyra by Zerjoff, she like brought me a little pad of paper and a pen. She's like, can you write that down, please? <laughs> um, so Lyra, most of you are probably familiar with this fragrance. If not, I highly suggest getting a sample. I think it is super one of those mass appealing fragrances. I've never heard anyone say they dislike this scent. Um, it's bergamot, blood orange, lavender, rose, jasmine, cinnamon, licorice, vanilla, musk, and caramel. However, this is mostly a spicy caramel scent with some of that blood orange in the opening it is a delicious caramel it smells so like it's just such a perfect gourmand scent and it just smells so delicious that um i would definitely oh and it's very long lasting and it has a uh, stronger projection so if i'm in a crowded place with a lot of people i would stand out wearing lira the next one is a casual lunch or coffee with friends. So in the winter, I have two, two perfumes for this one. Um, so hopefully it's okay. I couldn't just pick one because in the winter I would wear something like Chobad's Le de Biscuit. Um, so it's like milky biscuit scent. This here only has a few notes. It's basically vanilla, caramel, and biscuit. It smells like a cookie. It's so effortless. It's so easy. You could probably douse yourself with this. It's not the super most long lasting fragrance, but I really like it. And for winter time, it's such a unique, great gourmand scent. 
scent. Now, if we were meeting in the summertime, I would probably pick something like Watermelon by Shea and Blue. Uh, so uh, this one here, it has in it, it's not just straight up watermelon, it's got some green mandarin, honeysuckle, green leaves, green tea, and vetiver. But when I smell this, I mostly get this like fresh, almost aquatic watermelon scent. Absolutely love it. And it's perfect for like a casual fragrance during the day with friends. And the fourth tag was, what would you wear to a, oops, this is not going to fit in frame here. <laughs> what would you wear to a upscale lunch with family? And so I immediately went towards um, this Bulgari one. It's Kale Luna. I mean, first of all, the bottle is absolutely it gorgeous this is how it opens up and um, oh and one thing i just filmed my full uh, perfume collection video i will link down that i will link that down below if you're interested and i just went and then i realized i got was watching uh, rose and jones's video yesterday and was tagged and so i started pulling out all my fragrances again today and my husband's like didn't you just like film the video and reorganize every fragrance and i'm like yes but now i just had to pull out another 10 fragrances <laughs> <laughs> after it all got organized but it's all for a good cause <laughs> um so this would be this is like a powdery scent and i think for an upscale lunch with my family which would you'd probably be my mom and grandma i would probably pick something powdery or violet based and this uh fragrance was released in 2014 now on fragrantica i noticed it was marketed as a woody and spicy scent and i don't really get too heavy woods or spiciness. I just get kind of like a creamy floral. The notes are milk, iris, cardamom, amber, helotrope, sandalwood, and pear. And I definitely just get a powdery and milky scent from this fragrance. I really like it. I think it's sophisticated and elegant. It doesn't um, it doesn't have like enormous projection in my point of view, but it is long lasting enough. So I think that it would be a great lunchtime scent. And the next tag was, or I shouldn't say tag, the next item is, let's just zoom in here to that, is what would you wear to a zoo or animal park? So funny enough, actually my husband and I love going to see different zoos and animals. And I definitely appreciate the zoos that have really large and more natural looking enclosures. We've gone to a number of them, um, actually in different continents too. And usually we would be going kind of in spring, summer. I don't want to wear anything super sweet or my usual gourmand sweet florals because I just don't want bees to come at me. And a lot of times there's insects at these <laughs> animal parks. So in my point of view, I wanted something really fresh and clean smelling, something light. And I thought that zoologists, a dragonfly, and plus it's an animal, it's like sort of fitting, I think, would be the perfect choice for kind of going to, I'd even say to a park, because you don't want to, or to like a, uh, to a garden somewhere or something like that. So this has, um, it was released in 2017. It's a sheep prey floral. It's got top notes of aldehydes, helotrope, lemon, peony, and rainwater. Uh, middle notes of cherry blossom, clover, iris, lotus, and rice. Base notes of amber, moss, musk, papyrus, and sandalwood. Now, I really get that rainwater wet smell from this with some of that moss and a little bit of a helotrope and cherry blossom. And it's just wonderful. It's a light fragrance. I already have the travel size. This is, they come in the spray. Um, so if we are, you know, touring a... Um, a zoo or something we'd probably be on vacation this would be a great fragrance to take along on vacation the next situation is an outdoor concert and festival so <laughs> i don't know when we'll be able to do indoor concerts and festivals uh with like a lot of thousands with thousands of people like who knows when that will be something we can do but outdoor concerts seems much more doable so i'm hoping that this summer they'll be able to have some of that so i figured it would be a summer scent. It would be something that I would, um, it would probably be hot outside. And so I wanted something that would smell really good in the heat, something that if you sweat in it, it actually, you know, compliments you. It smells really good. And I would pick Soleil Blanc by Tom Ford. This fragrance, um, 
You can get it in a lot of different sizes now. It's an oriental floral that was released in 2016. This has become like a major hit. I see it on a lot of my favorite summer videos. Um, people in the fragrance community seem to really enjoy this scent as well as a lot of influencers, makeup artists, just everywhere on YouTube. I've seen this video talked about and there's a reason. It's because it's like really good. I love this one. Um, and so this has top notes of pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, pink pepper, middle notes of tuberose, alang alang, and jasmine, and a base of coconut, amber, tonka, and benzoin. And the coconut's really creamy in this. The pistachio just gives it that kind of uniqueness. And so I really like Sole Blanc by Tom Ford as my kind of outdoor concert or festival scent. As for travel plans, oh, trying to think of when we can go on planes again, <laughs> um, because we're not, uh, for us right now, as I'm filming this, it's closed for non-essential um, travel right now, Canada. So if I ever go on a plane, I want to be mindful of the people sitting beside me. Um, I've, there's a lot of people that do tend to get either have an intolerance, an allergy or something to strong floral scents, I find. Uh, actually, my husband is one of them. And so I feel like if you're going to wear a fragrance where you sit beside someone who will have no choice in what they're going to be smelling for the next 12 hours, it's somewhat to be considerate of don't put on a powerhouse where, you know, seven rows of the airplane are gonna be like, what is that smell? Now, I have a feeling we're probably gonna be wearing masks on airplanes for a really long time. So maybe just like spray your own mask, wear what you want, I don't know. <laughs> but my choice for travel tends to be vanilla-based fragrances. I really like Tijota's Indult. Um, this is a very, you know, famous vanilla scent. It's basically vanilla bean and musk. It doesn't have a lot in it, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's it's very expensive for what it is. Any vanilla, I think, would work in um, wearing it for a plane. I find a lot of people who have allergies or intolerances, when they do complain about a scent, it doesn't tend to be vanilla. Maybe it's because people cook with vanilla, so it's a little different. It's not um, as jarring as, you know, like, uh, kind of like flowers or something like that. I just find that uh, vanilla is quite a mass appealing scent. So I would probably wear this on the next flight I take. I can't wait. I would probably decant a little bit. It's long lasting, so you don't have to reapply it and you just smell all nice and cozy for the entire flight. Then we have, um, what would you wear ice skating or swimming? Um, since I'm Canadian, I'm going to uh, include uh, ice, uh, playing ice hockey as well. <laughs> so I'm including that in the tag. Um, I don't know if I'd wear anything swimming. Maybe when I got out of the water, I'd put on something. Um, I don't really like the smell of chlorine. So I almost don't want to like mix certain scents with that. We have a hot tub and the bromine in it. I like can't stand the smell. If I ever use it, I have to take a shower and like make sure I wear a fragranted, um, body wash to make sure I get the smell off. So when I played, uh, ice hockey. It's actually not a, it's been under, we're not allowed to play right now due to COVID. Um, I actually sometimes wore black opium by YSL. I, it doesn't look like it's like probably down to here. I use this a ton and I doused myself. I don't know. This is a, one of the larger bottles. It looks like I haven't even used it, but I've used it for years. <laughs> so I, I guess you just don't need that much of it to spray. Uh, it's an Oriental Vanilla, released in 2014, super popular now, and it's got a ton of flankers out there. I just uh, keep going back to the original. I just love the original one. And uh, it's got moderate longevity, moderate to strong projection, some top notes of pear, pink pepper, orange blossom. Now, if you know me or in my channel, you're aware that I don't really like orange blossom in fragrance, and I find it's very, very minimal in this fragrance to the point where I can't really detect it, or I just, it doesn't, that orange blossom note that usually bothers me doesn't bother me in this at all. It's got middle notes of coffee, jasmine, bitter almond, and licorice. Um, I don't get too much of the licorice, to be honest, and base of vanilla, patchouli, cedar, and cashmere wood. I definitely get the vanilla and coffee. It's a great scent. It's got a little extra to it and um, it makes me feel powerful and the coffee is like energizing and I really liked wearing this for ice hockey when I was actually able to play. Okay and on to the ninth situation we have what would I wear at the farmer's market. 
um, or I guess it's, yeah, just like outside in a farmer's market. So I assumed this would be in summertime, just going around, grabbing some, you know, vegetables or food, looking around at all the crafts. And I would choose Grain de Jolie, or Jolie, yeah, which is um, Seed of Joy, and it's by Aude Italie. And here it is. Um, so this here, it's a pomegranate centered fragrance. Uh, released in 2014, I thought it would be kind of like a fun, fruity, sweet scent to wear during the day. It's got top notes of berries, pomegranate, and red currants with middle notes of some florals, praline, and freesia, and base notes of musk and cedar. And it's just such a bursting with sweetness pomegranate scent, but not too too sweet i really like it and so i thought this would be perfect for wearing during the day in kind of warmer weather touring around looking at a farmer's markets now for the last one number 10 um i'm gonna kind of cheat because it says what would you wear exploring the city and if i ever go to a new city and we go exploring with my husband i don't wear fragrance and the reason is is because i plan to buy a fragrance <laughs> I always want to hit up perfume shops in whatever city I'm going to and I find when I head out in the morning I don't want to wear anything so I when I get to the perfume shop I can basically try at least two different scents on each arm and then hopefully pick out something that I really like if I had to pick something I would probably throw some little samples that I have in my bag and wear one of those if I know that there is going to be no um, perfume shops available and I just want to travel with it I'd probably have something decanted but there is an honorable mention and and Rosen Jones asked, what would you wear to uh, meeting up with your perfume friends and fragrance friends? And so I have kind of two answers to that. The first one is nothing again, because when we get together it, in Vancouver with our perfume meetups, and thanks to Stacy for organizing them always, it's always such a blast and I have been missing them. And I literally just messaged her and was telling her how much I miss these perfume meetups at this time. And I usually wear nothing because we actually over fragrance, like wherever we are, we take over the area, everything becomes wonderful smelling. And you basically try on probably six to 10 to maybe 15 cents by, you know, smelling them. People try them on their skin. It's just, I, I tend to go with nothing. However, if I were to bring something and I had to wear something, I would pick Mortal Skin by Stefan Humbert Lucas. And because I know that everyone would appreciate this scent in that situation. The bottle is absolutely gorgeous. I've done a review of this fragrance before on my channel, but it's got, it's kind of in three parts and that's the way they kind of describe it online, um, even on the actual Stefan Humbert Lucas website. And they've got blackberry, marine scents, galbanum, incense, and ink. Now, ink was mentioned on Fragrantica, but it doesn't seem to be mentioned on the actual website unless I have totally, you know, <laughs> missed one of the words that means ink because um, they did have a cistus note listed on the actual website. So I'm not sure, but I do get kind of, it almost, you almost want to get that kind of inky squid smell I don't know how to explain it but not squid I don't know like you have like a really strong inky smell and there's leather open ox iris saffron myrrh cardamom and then we have in the last kind of phase of the fragrance ambergris styrax sandalwood civet cedarwood birch and musk there's a guarantee I mispronounced one of those notes. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but this is just such an intoxicating dark and it's like a powerhouse fragrance. People can smell it from far away when you're wearing it. And it's different, it's unique. If I smelt this when I started my fragrance journey, I would probably be like, oh, that's too much. But now I just tend to go for it more and more and I just absolutely love Mortal Skin. And so those were my, um, fragrances that I would pick for this tag and I would love to tag a couple 
of YouTubers and I noticed that some people were already tagged in videos so I apologize if you were already tagged or if you don't want to do this tag don't ever feel like you need to do it but I really want to tag a bougie fragrance and I want to tag a newer YouTuber who's Prefumo and I apologize if I've mispronounced that I will link all of the youtubers mentioned down below check out their channels if you haven't already and um if you aren't tagged just do it like nobody you don't have to be tagged to enjoy a video at first i was so like oh i always have to be tagged i won't i, I can't do it and now i'm just like ah if I don't get tagged in a certain amount of time and the tag interests me, I'm, I'm just going to, I just do the video. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. I don't care. Um, so these are basically all of my suggestions. And, uh, oops, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like my video, please don't forget to like and subscribe.